Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Muhammedu ve salli ala Resulihi al-Kerim. Amma ba'd. Fakat kala Allah Ta'ala fil Kur'an al-Majid ve Farqad al-Hamid ba'da fa'audu billahi minash shaytan al-Rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Laqad kana lakum fi Resulillahi usbukun hasanatun liman kana yarju Allah ve al-yawm al-akhir ve zekar Allah kathira. صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الأمي الكريم نحن على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله بثنك الله سبحانه وتعالى that he has allowed us to sit for a short while and praise the Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم to talk about the blessed life of Nabi Pak صلى الله عليه وسلم which is the spiritual hayat of our lives which gives us the ability to, to to live our lives in such a way that we find bliss and happiness upon the dhikr of Rasul Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as we know it is a month of Rabiul Awwal so you'll see many gatherings mm-hmm. taking a place to and fro regarding the, the life of Rasulullah sallallahu mm-hmm. alayhi wa sallam and all of these are to encourage us uh, not just a simple mere lip service and praise but to make our lives like the way Allah wants us to be in imitating Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so in conclusion we can say that Rasulullah's life comprises of two aspects one is not sunnat e dahir one is second one is sunnat e batin sunnat e dahir it also has two aspects sunnat al huda and Sunnat Zawaid, which was explained last week with the Fadl of Allah. So Sunnat Zahir is everything on the outset, how the Prophet prayed, how the Prophet gave charity, how the Prophet Islam dealt with people, uh, how he would eat, how he would sleep, how he, uh, his daily routine. This was his Sunnat Zahir. There is also a different Sunnat. So when we hear the word Sunnah, Sunnah, revive the Sunnah, live upon the Sunnah, follow the Sunnah, imitate the Sunnah, give life to the sunnah so we automatically think just that of the physical aspect but there is another aspect of sunnah known as sunnah batin also known as fiqhi batin as well and in the sub of istila known as akhlaq hamida or akhlaq fadila this is known as sunnah batin so sunnah batin is as we translate into english is the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam of the inside for example his generosity is also a sunnah to practice. His forgiveness is also a sunnah to practice. His humbleness is also a sunnah to practice. His gratitude, his patience, his, uh, his uh, forgiving people, his lufu Allah, these are also sunnahs because they are also amongst the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So sometimes we will see, and this is why some people get put off deen, uh, is because some people, they, they create a sunnah zahir in their life. They, mashallah, you might see them with topi and amama or, or the beard, mashallah, which is very important sunnah, very important sunnah, and wearing Islamic clothing. But the inside is very much different. They, they have hatred, they have bughs, they have adawat, they have kina, they have takabur, they have ujub. All of these evil traits, they reside within them. So you're following sunnah, but not in its entirety, only an aspect. The actual sunnah for which Rasulullah was sent in this world to teach, from that we have washed our hands. So in the short time that we share today, I will mention the importance of the prophetic way of life, the sunnah batin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will realize after today's small session, the importance, the ahmiyat of the uh, sunnah batin known as good character so rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam his mission on this dunya why did allah send rasulullah the mission of rasulullah him he himself mentions inna ma bu'ithtu li utammim makarim al akhlaq i have only been sent to perfect and complete good character i have come to teach mankind what is good character and wherever there is good character, I have come to perfect it and I have come to enhance it and to complete it and show the world what true good character is. That is why Rasulullah's life from 
born from the age of maturity till death, even in adolescence and even before that, in young age, you will see the sunnah, how his life is, subhanallah, is, is the epitome of excellence. There's no other life that can be compared in, in greatness, in, 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 in honor, in, in prestigiousness, in, in, in dignity than the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So the mission of Rasulullah is to perfect and, good, and complete good character. So this, what does this teach me and you? That if this is my Habib's mission, I also have to follow this mission. So when I compare my life, how much good character is in my life? I may come fajr, which is easy for me, but I can't give salam to somebody, which is also a sunnah of Rasulullah. I may even pray tahajjud all night long, but I find it difficulty to forgive somebody. I may have an argument, I may be fighting with somebody, but inside my heart I can't find the space to forgive such a person. This is an, a natural occurrence that we see, uh, which happens inside our lives. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam practically, amili torpe, demonstrated to the whole entire world the most pristine code of sublime conduct and character. Allah give all of us tawfiq to understand this life, read about this life, and then implement this life. Only then will we be following the sunnah in its entirety. So what is good character? There's a hadith of Tibrani and of Hakim, Mustadraki Hakim, that Sayyidina Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu narrates that Nabi Pak sallallahu alayhi wa said, whoever has three qualities, Allah will grant him an easy reckoning and will admit him into paradise. So his dukhul in Jannah will be easy and his hisab and qiyamah will become easy if he has three sifat inside him. What are those three sifat? So Rasulullah said, so Hadith Abu Huraira when he heard this, radiallahu anhu said, uh, Fidaka Abi wa Ummi, may my parents be sacrificed for you, Ya Rasulullah. Please teach me what are those three sifat. Because I want them as well. I want to enter Jannah. I also want Allah to forgive me. So Rasulullah said, so number one, to spend upon the one who withholds from you. To spend upon the one who withholds from you. Number two, to join ties with those who severe ties with you. Those who break ties with you, like your brother and sister have an argument, you stop talking, you stop talking with your uncle or your auntie or your wife, then you, you break in the, the tie of relationship, kinship, but you do sila rahmi and you join together this person. And number three, Rasulullah said, to wa'afu amman dhalamak and to forgive those who cause you harm. So when you have in, within your heart to forgive, they go, forgetting a crime is difficult, but to forgive something, Something in our ikhtiyar. Look, one thing is ikhtiyari. One other is غير ikhtiyari. Maaf karna mere kudrat mein hai. Bhool jana mere ikhtiyar mein nahi hai. So that which is in my uh, in my ability, I should execute that. So if someone hurted me, harmed me, violated my rights, don't zulm upon me. In my heart, oh Allah, I have forgiven him for your sake. But you may not forget a cause of your taklif. But upon doing this action, Allah Taala's Habiba said. You will be granted Jannah of Allah and Allah Ta'ala will make your recognition easy for you on the day of Qiyamah. Now see how much is it. Allah has to give you the courage. To have the courage and the courage, actually it takes courage to forgive people. You know, you, you will see some people, they make wasiyah before they die, that when I die, don't let my son come to my janaza. People say this. Don't let, my, don't let my brother carry my janazah when I die. This is how much books and adawah they have. So whatever you've done, it's all washed away. Rasulullah said in the hadith, if you don't talk to your Muslim brother, and here Muslim brother means not biological brother, Muslim brother. For more than fawqa thalaf, for more than three days, if you die, you cannot enter Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't enter Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hadith of Bukhari Sharif. So this, this hadith will create inside you the impression, the importance of akhuwat, brotherhood, forgiving, forbearance, humility, tawazu, the need of this. And this, what is this? sunnat batin of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is called character. إِنَّمَا بُعِثُّ لِيُتَمِّمْ مَكَارِمًا 
اخلاق تو معاف کرنا مشکل ہو گیا ہے نماز پڑھنا آسان ہے ذکر کرنا آسان ہے کسی سے درگزر کرنا مشکل ہو گیا تہجد پڑھنا آسان ہو گیا اور کسی کو یعنی اللہ کے خاطر درگزر کر کے معاف کرنا ان کی خطاؤں کو معاف کر دینا یہ ہمارے لیے مشکل ہو گیا بلکہ آج کل یہ سمجھ لو کہ حج کے لیے جانا راتوں کو تہجد پڑھنا اور اللہ کے رام خوب خرچ کرنا ہمارے لیے آسان ہو گیا ہے لیکن کسی ایک مسلمان بھائی کو سلام کہنا ہمارے لیے مشکل ہو گیا وی کانٹ ایون فائنڈ ود اناور ہاٹ ٹو گیو سلام ٹو سم باڈی وی ہیو سو مچ اینمٹی نو آئی کان گیو ہم سلام آئی کان گیو ہم سلام آئی کان گیو ہم سلام دس از رسول اللہ از ٹیچنگ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم دس از ون ایگزامپل اینڈ دس مینی مینی ایگزامپلز ان سائڈ اور سو دس مینی مینی احادیث آن دس نیچر ویل نبی پاک صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہیز اسٹریس دی اہمیت اینڈ دی امپورٹنس آف دی سچ ایکشنز سو Abdullah bin Mubarak rahmatullahi alayhi would say that good character means what does good character mean that one should always have a pleasant and cheerful countenance always stay happy always smile at people ye khush rehna agar dil ke andar kuch mushkilat hai kuch pareshani bhi lekin jab kisi aur se milo to muskurahad ke sath milo show them that you are happy don't show them that you are feeling down smile at, by smiling at somebody you can make the day you smile at somebody they become happy if you have in a very horrible mood and you come home and the children see you oh no abu's in that mood again you're going to cause problem inside the house ghar aao and no matter how stressful day at work you've had come inside smile at the wife smile at the children wo foran khush ho jaate they become happy straight away this is the sunnah of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam that's why sahaba ikram say sahaba ikram have mentioned sahaba ikram that we never saw anyone smile more than the rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam he just smiled the most now who is rasulullah sallallahu what has he seen he seen adab e qabr with his eye he has seen jahannam with his eyes on shab e miraj if someone seen jahannam and punishment how can that person smile he's heard adab he would say ke uh, if you were to hear what i hear and if you were to see what i see you would never sleep in the night you would never uh, he said even wala tastum bin nisa bil furush you will never enjoy a single night with your wife ever again if you were to see what i have seen if you were to hear what i have heard mean the adab of qabr the scenes of jahannam the spectacles of akhirat he saw all of this allah taala showed him but yet when he would meet sahaba smiling at them but when he was away from the sahaba when he would sit down on his own كان رسول الله متواصل الاحزان دائما الفكره ليست له راحه حديث ما تسابع زي كي when he was alone you looked at rasulullah متواصل الاحزان دائمي فكر he was always in concern and ليست له راحه he never had any peace in his life constant fikr what will happen to this he might go jahannam he might die upon kufr this person is doing wrong that person is doing shirk this person is doing maasiyat what continuous la yatakallam illa fi ghayr illa fi haja he would never speak unless as a root when somebody came to him straight to he would smile at them how are you doing how is everything smiling at them that's why rasulullah said sallallahu alaihi wasallam inna min al-ma'ruf an talaka akhaka bi wajhi talqin to look at you muslim brother and smile at him is also a neki the court of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bad kar kisi ko dekh kar muskurana karam ka aap begin to write down he is doing good deeds good deeds just by smiling at somebody to allah taala grant us tawfiq to do this so this is the sunnah which needs to be revived and look much the majority people sitting here we are the people who have taluq with the masjid we come regularly to the masjid khud you look at your own life when you enter in the masjid how many people do you smile at both come we will we will smile you know subhanallah ajeeb this will start a diff, total different topic now but it comes to my mind ke rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam look at his condition how he lived his life the, 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 the difficulties he went through the torture he went through expelled from his home the the mockery the character assassination so much problems so much difficulties over and over until his last breath but he still made time never mind just to smile but to laugh and to joke with sahaba as well he used to joke with the sahaba he used to joke with small children he used to joke with elderly ladies he would joke with his sahaba he would make them laugh and smile 
And Sahaba Ikram themselves say that we used to laugh so much after Asr when the Rasulullah used to sit, the Rasulullah would sit down after Fajr or Asr, after Fajr the Hadith. And Sahaba say that we would sit down around him and we would talk about our past, how we used to live. And we used to nudge each other and we used to laugh and joke and the Rasulullah would smile at us and we would be joking like this in the masjid. We would, they would joke. And Hadith mentioned that at Fajr time, they would, Sahaba would come to the masjid and they would be cracking jokes with one another. Joking and, and then they would sing poetry and ashar at Fajr time. Can you imagine somebody walking in Fajr through the doors singing ashar and poetry? Meaning it's so odd now. Somebody says smile at Fajr time. Say, hey, what's happened to him? He's smiling. Sahaba Ikram used to sit down to the Ishraq laughing and joking at times. And ulama in, in hadith are mentioned because why? How could they smile and laugh and joke? Because their hearts were alive. Their hearts were clean. There was no enmity, nothing at all inside their hearts. One person saw Hadr Ali laughing once. One Tabi saw Hadr Ali laughing. So he looked at her and he was like a khushk Sufi. Okay. He started practicing like we say now, then you don't laugh and you're very rigid and head down all the time and you don't look at anybody. So this person saw Hadr Ali, Hadr Ali guaranteed Jannah by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Such a great. Whom Allah Ta'ala said, okay, tomorrow the flag of Khandak I will give, Khaybar I will give to a person who Allah and Rasulullah love and he loves Allah and Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then all Sahaba sat up like this to see which, which it is me. I said, where is Ali? And then Ali came and gave him the flag. He is loved by Allah and loved by Rasulullah. Imagine his maqam in the court of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Yet he would laugh so much. And once he was laughing so much that once person saw him and said, oh Ali, do you also laugh? Do you laugh as well? So he's whilst laughing, he said, Yes, I do laugh, but Al Imanu fi Kalbi Aadamu min al Jibal. That the Iman in my heart is greater than mountains. I can laugh. My laughing does not deter me from remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was the difference. So character, good character, noble character. This is needed. And Ashkal Vasibi, actually the topic has gone off now. But the practicing brothers, we need to smile more. We need to, to, to show love and affection. We come home like, like a lion. And then we be bhaag jati hai, bachche bhi bhaag jati hai. Pata nahi kya, bayan sun kar hai, apna ko bhoat bada sufi samaj ke gharu aage. Nahi, laugh and joke with them. Play around with them. I mentioned, I think a few weeks ago, how Rasulullah would behave with children. These are the sunnats that we have to revive inside our lives. So Hadr Abd bin Mubarak said, Good character means that one should always smile. Number two, carry out positive, uplifting actions. And number three, refrain from harming people. If a person can do these things, then he has the character of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Here, I'll finish off on this point. I will continue this next week, inshallah. I don't want to take too long. So in Hiya Ulumuddin, Imam Ghazali has mentioned, Lama Zabidi has quoted uh, a commentary of there. He says, that good character, akhlaq hasana means one should always meet people with a smiling face, deal with people gently, and attempt to uplift the spirits of people. Yeah, yeah, both bodhi sunnah. If you see somebody crying, or somebody is hurt, or somebody is upset, don't ignore him. Go and say, hey, what's the matter? Make him feel happy. This is the sunnah of Rasulullah. I'll just mention this case and then I'll finish. Okay, there was a small boy, Hadrat Anas ibn Malik's younger brother or stepbrother, who was known as Abu Umair. Rasulullah, he was, it was Abu Umair. So he had a pet bird. I cannot recall what bird it was, but he had a pet bird. And he used to always be walking out, stroking the neck of the bird. And the Rasulullah would see him, she went look towards the bird and he would smile at him. Stroking the bird, holding the bird, playing with the bird, then put it inside a cage and walk with the bird, then go and sit down, open the cage, take the bird, stroke the bird, talk with the bird. So one day his bird died. His bird. And he began to cry. My bird has died. So Rasulullah went past. I said, What has happened? He said, His bird has died. So Rasulullah gave him the cell. He said, Okay, it's fine. So he knew he was upset. So Rasulullah didn't ignore a child like we ignore our children. Rasulullah, the most busiest person the world has ever seen. 
a small child, innocent child whose pet bird has died. He gave him time as well. And he said, Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'alan nughair. O Abu Umair, what has happened to your bird? And when the Rasulullah began to do like rhymes, the small boy began to smile. So he's crying. And then the Rasulullah would, would joke with him and he would begin to smile. And then a few days later again, the child would begin to cry, remembering his pet bird. And then the Rasulullah would go to him and say, Ya Aba Umair, ma fa'alan nughair. And then what, by saying this, the boy straight would begin to smile again. So they go, is ek sabak milta hai? That when our children are feeling depressed or they come back from home, ty- from school, tired, lethargic, fatigued, don't ignore them. The sunnah of Habib وسلم, is to give them time at that time of, of depression. When anyone is feeling low, anyone is feeling negativity, anyone is feeling depressed, anyone's mood is down, uplift his spirit, make him feel blessed, make him feel special. And this was the great sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu He would make every single person feel the more special in his eyes. That's why every single sahabi, what would he say? 124,000 sahaba. What would each one say? Ke Rasulullah loves me the most. Each sahabi would feel this. Ke Rasulullah loves me the most. Why? That's the attention Rasulullah used to give people. This is also sunnah of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But we don't salam ka jawab tak nahi dete. We don't smile at people, we don't appreciate people. Somebody's took, somebody's car could be broken down. Allah Akbar, we'll just go straight past him. Puche tak nahi. We just think, I hope he doesn't see me driving past him. Yeah, hamara mizad ban chuka hai. We don't care about people's feelings, people's emotions. And this is the greatest sunnah of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first thing, the first, one of the first things, that will bring great reward on the day of Qiyamah or Balkhah. The first thing to be put on the scales of justice would be idkhalu surur fi qulubil mu'mineen. You know the times I've made somebody happy? And for example, I've made Osama happy, I've made Abbas happy, and you felt happy, you felt uh, spontaneous, like inside, you felt really a joy. That joy you felt, I will get good deeds for it. Allah will give me good deeds for that. And that will be weighed on the day of Qiyamah in my book of deeds. And because of that, a person will enter Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by making somebody feel happy. So, if I have a day of my life, but one day of how many people have I brought a smile to in the last 24 hours? And we can't possibly find one. We have caused hurt to people. Before we left for Isha, we probably fighted with the wife. Before we left the home, we probably told the children off and made them feel really upset. So this is our mizaj. And, and in front of the, uh, in, 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 in social circles, okay, oh, this guy is a great man, he's very decent, he's very pleasant, very, mashallah, really great. But the, this same character at home is, 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 is horrible. It, it's very khilaf sunnah. And this is what is not wanted from us as the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi that's why this one hadith here well, caught my eye. Look here. Like we finish the topic. Hadith Abu Huraira says that immediately hadith, that person's iman is most perfect, whose akhlaq is most righteous, and who treats his wife the best. This is also not of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But this is another topic for another day. We make dua to Allah Ta'ala. Allah Ta'ala gives me the tawfiq. Allah Ta'ala gives all of us tawfiq. Again, it's a rab- the month of Rabi al awwal this is a month where we should try to bring these sunnahs inside our life and practically engage in these a'mal so we can acquire the rahmat from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah ta'ala give me the tawfiq. Allah ta'ala give all of us tawfiq. Wa akhiru da'wana. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa sallallahu an nabi wa rabbihi wa alayna illa balaam. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.